Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today we're going to talk about protein again because uh, one of the most one of the most frequent questions that we get is about protein. How much of protein? What quality of protein? And how much does the body really need? Of course, we have clever advertising and marketing where today everyone who's seen an ad in regards to protein now believes that we need more protein. We need more protein to build muscle, we need more protein to lose weight, we need more protein for your hair, your skin and everything else. And that is true because the fundamental, the functional uh, uh, element of protein is basically the building blocks of every single cell in the human body. Now be it your hair, be it your skin, be it your nails, your muscles, your organ, your kidney, your liver, your heart, your cells, everything is protein. So yes, we need protein for survival, we need protein to get better, we need protein for our immune system and everything else. But how much? The first thing that we need to operate with is common sense. A lot of people out there consume a lot of protein, high protein diets, but most of them still have a lot of body fat, they have bellies, they still have muscle injuries, they still have all of these problems. So really, is it about the amount of protein, the quality of protein, or how you space out your protein intake during the day? Now what I'm talking today is relevant for the layman, for all of us. If you're a bodybuilder, or if you're an athlete, please understand that this information is for the layman. Of course, when you're a bodybuilder, when you're an athlete, there are supplements, there's recovery, there are a whole load of other things that you do to metabolize and use your protein more effectively. So this is for everyone else. What we need to understand that, okay, you can be protein deficient even if you're consuming a high protein diet. And that's what happens in most of the people who we see. They're taking a lot of protein, but yet, they don't have the right amount of lean mass, they're still struggling with gut issues, hair problem and skin problems. Because what we need to understand, it's not about how much protein you consume, it's about how your body can digest and break down protein into amino acids, which is then utilized by your muscles and your cells. So you can go on stuffing your body with protein, taking all of these supplements and stuff like that, and still be protein deficient. So the next question is, how do we know if we're protein deficient? How do we know? Well, the best way is to listen to your body and these are the signs that your body will give you if you are protein deficient. Let's start off right away. Do you get sick? Do you often get sick and you have a problem recovering? Now the easiest way to recover is to take your antibiotics, to take your crocins and all of that stuff, recover really quickly, take painkillers, suppress your pain and then you're fine. Pushing that aside, do you fall sick often and do you take time to recover? Well, when we fall sick, when we get an infection, our body produces antibodies to fight these infections, to fight bacteria, to fight viruses and all of these things. These antibodies are also made out of protein. So if you are protein deficient, you will have a low immune system that is unable to produce the right amount of antibodies, which will help you recover sooner and prevent you from falling sick. So protein and your immune system are directly correlated with each other. You know, every cell, there are cells in your system, your immune cells, your N killer cells, your T cells, your B cells, that have the function of fighting infection, recognizing cancer cells, and all of these things. Those are protein as well. So if you are deficient in protein, you have a low immune system which is not enabled or empowered to fight infections out of your system. So when you look at cases like fibromyalgia, you look at cancer, you like look at rheumatoid arthritis, all of these cases, are cases of inflammation, yes, 100% correct, but also low protein intake. This doesn't mean that you go and start pumping yourself up with protein. It means that you look at your digestion, you look at assimilation, and you look at exactly how much of protein your body type needs, not what people around you need, what your body type needs. You know, so you look at your you look at your fat percentage, you look at your muscle percentage. If you've got too much of fat in your body, it automatically means that you have less muscle, which means you probably have less protein because protein is used to build muscle when you couple it with the right amount of exercise. So when we look at our health in general, at our immune system, whether we're trying to recover from a disease or we're trying to prevent a disease or get better, it is so important for us to make sure that we are getting the right amount of protein. So if you're falling sick, not recovering soon, you gotta look at your protein intake. That's one indicator that your body will give you. Remember, your body cannot heal without protein. What I'm noticing is a new fad. A lot of people are coming to us and saying we're on a zero protein diet. 
Please understand that fat diets are gonna cause more harm than good. Every cell in the human body requires protein. By going on a zero protein diet, understand certain cases of cancer, yes, it is true that protein feeds the tumor. So a lot of people try to go zero protein. Please understand that's not the right way to do it. You need to take protein in smaller quantities and space it out, you know, so that even your healthy cells and your immune functions, your immune system gets the protein it needs to fight your cancer and fight all your other conditions. The second sign, if you constantly get bloated or gassy after eating your main meals, if you're constantly bloated or gassy, this tells you that your body is not producing the right amount of enzymes to break down protein. Like I said, most people take a lot of protein, but yet they are protein deficient. Because if you don't have the right enzymes, protease is the enz enzyme that your pancreas produce to break down protein. So if you don't have the right amount of proteins and you're not breaking down protein, you'll start to get very gassy and very bloated after your meals. So that's another sign that you are protein deficient or protein enzyme deficient. And then you need to look at the foods which are rich in enzymes like lipase, like amylase and proteins that your body uses to break down foods. We've done a video on that. We'll post that link right after this. The second is you need to understand that if you don't have the right amount of, uh, of enzymes, today people with ulcers, people with GERD, people with gallbladder disease, people with constant indigestion, these are all signs of a lack of enzymes to break down proteins, carbs, and fats in your body. So instead of putting more protein in your body, first look at correcting your system and making sure you have the right amount of digestive enzymes. When you're constipated, I keep talking about constipation. You know, constipation may seem like a problem that we can live with and everyone says, oh, people are constipated. You can walk into a pharmacy, buy an over-the-counter constipation laxative and people treat themselves with this all across the world. But to us, constipation is the first sign of the body that something is going terribly wrong with you. Let's understand, when you're constipated, your body's trying to push out, your body is trying to push out toxins from your system. When you're constipated, it gets backed up into your system and toxins from your stool gets reabsorbed across your intestinal wall back into your blood. That is something called auto-intoxication. You don't need bad air and bad food to intoxicate you. It's even constipation that will push all these toxins back into your system. So women back up estrogen, estrogen gets reactivated in your liver and then you have estrogen dominance feeding your ovaries, your cysts, your fibroids, your ER positive cancers, your endometrial walls, creating a mess with your hormones and all of that stuff and likewise with men. So please understand that constipation again is a huge problem. And we need to understand that we need the right amount of enzymes to break down protein and all of these macronutrients so that we don't get constipated. Your gut health. If you have poor gut health, you are not breaking down protein or absorbing it the right way. All of your macronutrients break down into vitamins, amino acids, and they get absorbed into your system. So it's, all, it's really about absorption. It's not really about what you eat. Yes, it's important about what you eat, but it's important about how your body can break down what you eat, assimilate what you eat, and absorb what you eat. It's only with good absorption that all, does all the nutrients reach all the trillion cells in the human body. So we need to look at bloating, we need to look at candida, we need to look at you know all the signs that our gut gives us telling us that something's wrong. So some people eat a protein meal and they get bloated very soon, or when they burp, you can get the smell of that chicken or the protein which is undigested, clearly telling you that you don't have the right amount of enzymes to break down protein, so you fix that with your diet. If you're constantly sad and anxious, it doesn't mean you need to shrink always, it doesn't mean you need antidepressants. You need to look at your protein because all of your neurotransmitters, like serotonin, like GABA, all of them are protein. So if you have a protein deficiency, you don't even have the right neurotransmitters to keep you happy, to keep you from being anxious, to keep you from being sad. So everything isn't just about meditation, pranayama, and exercise. Sometimes something as simple as a protein deficiency can affect your moods, create mood swings, and create highs and lows in your, in your system. Uh, we talk about neurotransmitters, let's talk about hormones. If you have a hormonal imbalance, you have thyroid, you have diabetes, you have low testosterone, you have high estrogen, these are all hormones. The foundation of hormones are proteins. So if you're trying to correct a hormonal imbalance and you don't have the right amount of protein in your system, you have a worse problem. Why does birth control pills make women go through fluctuations in their, me in their, me in their moods? Number one, it's a synthetic. Number two, 
it is a hormone it basically messes up and it completely disrupts your other hormones leading to these mood swings so protein also plays a huge role with your hormonal balance now today in today's world of fat diets where people are trying to under eat and starve themselves you are automatically getting deficient in protein which is affecting all of these functions the next clue if you're constantly gaining weight and you have a lot of fat and less muscle your body's trying to tell you that you are deficient in protein because the more muscle mass you have the less fat you have so the more muscle you put on which means you have the right amount of protein your exercise translates into some amount of lean muscle or lean mass guess what that is going to increase your metabolic rate and your muscle is what constantly keeps you burning fat and keeps your metabolism high eating every one and a half hour two hours these are all myths about boosting your metabolism what boosts your metabolism is good sleep good balance of hormones the right amount of muscle which in turn translates to the right amount of protein in your body so if you're working out doing everything but yet you find your skin is saggy and loose and you have fat when you should have muscle you want to check the protein that you have coming to skin everyone's running after collagen because collagen yes it is great for the elasticity of our skin but where does collagen come from protein again so you can go on stuffing yourself with collagen but if you don't have the right amount of protein in your body it's useless first fix your protein most people when they're protein deficient and they start having the right amount of protein the first thing that changes besides their muscle is their skin their skin starts glowing their skin gets more toned and more firm so you see a lot of people punish their bodies with exercise and all these fad diets they lose all that weight but they look old they look haggard their skin gets wrinkled even when they're young that means you're doing it the wrong way and you have less protein in your system when it comes to your your skin your hair brittle nails again think collagen think protein no amount of vitamins no amount of supplements cosmetics and all of that stuff is going to change it if you have a protein deficiency the next sign the next sign is if you're constantly training and you're getting injured all the time you need more rest days you need more and more rest days to basically uh, you know get over your training if you're overtraining like i always said you need more recovery and you need more protein so if you find that you're getting injured constantly it's because your muscles your joints your ligaments your tendons are all made up of protein so when you wear them out with exercise and you don't feed them with protein protein breaks down into amino acids it feeds your muscles your muscles grow when you are in rest phase it's as simple as that muscles are toned in the gym fed in the kitchen and made in bed while you sleep <clears throat> so all of your joint pains and all of these things you can go on popping anti-inflammatories and turmeric and holly and all of that stuff it's good for you but look at your protein intake now as we age our protein our muscle mass decreases which is why it's so important for our parents and our grandparents to make sure that every meal of them has a certain amount of protein because we lose it naturally as we age especially after the age of 50 so it is so important it is so important for you to make sure that you balance your protein at every age as you're getting as you're getting older and even in our children because protein is the building blocks of everyone today all parents come with problems oh my child's not growing they're not growing tall first look at their protein intake this doesn't mean you stuff them with protein but you make sure that they have balanced meals you will not find protein in junk food in processed food and in all of the food which is not meant for us which is ultra processed foods acidity if you are the kind of person who constantly takes acid blockers antacids remember antacids work by making your stomach to stop producing acid protein first needs to get broken down by stomach acid and then the enzymes take over and further breaks it down so if you're on antacids there's a huge chance that you're protein deficient because you're not even producing the right amount of acid to break down protein to be absorbed by your system so it's as simple if you listen to your body your body will tell you exactly what is going wrong and most no one can tell you if you're protein deficient but your own body you can download apps enter your food do all of that calorie counting rubbish which doesn't work it gives you a clue but it is not as accurate as what your inner body your biofeedback of your body will tell you when it comes to a deficiency of protein so please understand going high protein blindly and doing it the wrong way like i said most people who are high protein are still protein deficient because they're not breaking it down and absorbing it so look at your body holistically look at whether you're digesting it absorbing it from the signs that i gave you and that's exactly how you fix it tomorrow's video will talk about the best sources of protein vegetarian 
non-vegetarian, how you can get that protein in your system. There are a lot of people asking, how much of protein do I need? I don't have that answer for you. It's as simple as that. You figure it out from the symptoms that I gave you, from the signs that I gave you, whether you have the right amount of protein. Listen to your body, because everyone's body is unique. Person A may, may need a particular gram of protein. Person B may need a different amount. It's dependent on your activity. It's dependent on your stress levels. It's dependent on how much of energy you consume and so many different factors. So listen to your body. Your body will tell you whether you're deficient in protein or not. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.